this is an interesting clip taken from DJ Academics and also features other people that have kind of posted it on social media. It features the TikTok CEO sitting down as he was kind of getting grilled, grilled, grilled by Congress regarding, you know, um, TikTok's influence in America and politics and wider society. And there's a whole really strange thing going on there in the moment at, at you know at right now because it kind of feels like america's just basically finally waking up to the idea that you know china is becoming a real superpower and they're basically starting to let their nuts hang and basically showing the influence and the power that they have over the ability to kind of control you know america's youth for the most part by making them dance and sing on that st- silly app but regardless i thought this revelation was really interesting and I also find people's reaction to it really interesting too, because the TikTok CEO basically admitted that they can decide who goes viral and who doesn't go viral, which I thought was something most people understood to be the, to be true. But I guess it's a revelation that people didn't really know about, or an insight insight people didn't really know about when it comes to startup companies. Let's play it. This is um C TikTok CEO Stephen Chu talking about it or responding to the question regarding um virality and whatnot. I think he mentions Taylor Swift. Mr. Curtis, my colleague, mentioned the use of heating tool on your platform to make specific videos go viral or get more views. Does TikTok use a cooling tool where employees can manually limit the amplification of content that TikTok should hide, like content that promotes eating disorders, drug use, or suicide among children? Uh, the, the only promotion tool that we have is um, approved by the local teams, so in the U.S. by the U.S. team, and it's for commercial purposes like like Taylor Swift, you know, I think when she onboarded, we, you know, so heated a little. Yes or no? <laughs> so he basically was talking about heating tool, and that's why they have the Congress guys asking about do you have a calling tool, which is essentially a way to kind of be, I guess, shadow banned in a way, right? Um, I was surprised why this was an issue for the longest time, especially in the states. Maybe because people politicized the whole shadow banning thing; it became a little bit of a conspiratorial thing. But having worked at a lot of startups, and I've worked at pretty you know some pretty decent ones some pretty high profile ones especially ones that have like a social media aspect or community sort of side to it this is kind of the standard thing that happens in most companies especially startups because for the most part if you're a startup and you want to you know raise funds um, for your next investment round to help pay for new employees new office digs um, improvements on the product that you have you essentially cook the numbers or you maybe emphasize or you maybe highlight the best numbers and you basically take it to the investors or potential investors and you basically use those metrics as an opportunity for you to maybe extract more money for you to kind of continue doing what you're doing. So when you do that sort of practice, it kind of lends itself to people deciding to take some liberties with other aspects of the company when it comes to metrics that you can control from the back end. And if you want to basically, you know, get more brands involved, get more advertising sponsorship, then making the platform that you're kind of building to be somewhat um to be somewhat beneficial to a user or celebrity would make it make more sense this is the same reason why apps like um cameo for instance have an outreach team who specifically go after celebrities who haven't signed up to cameos yet and kind of get them on board offer them favorable terms maybe offer them a particular percentage in the first few months maybe give them an upfront fee to get them on board so that other celebrities who they want to get on board can see oh look that guy's on there i want to get on cameo the same thing happens with social media platforms especially when they're first starting because the market share now is obviously split before tiktok was around was split mostly between like instagram facebook and tick not facebook and twitter you'd say right for the most part maybe snapchat so when tiktok went to get involved the best way to do it was to basically cook the numbers and a good way what they did in the early parts of it because i remember gary v talking about tiktok forever when it first sort of launched was that tiktok basically allowed everybody that signed up to get really viral really quickly and i think most part for most people if you sign up to tiktok early on your first couple of no whatever posts you kind of spent no, no, no at least one of your posts sorry let's just go there at least one of your posts would get a really high amount of engagement compared to everybody else and when places like instagram were sort of throttling accounts and basically making people you know because instagram essentially are trying to push the whole facebook advertising or instagram paid ads portion of the of the business so they won't let your post get to you know as many people as it did in the past i think most people can attest to the fact that you know most of their posts don't really reach as many people as they would like it to reach and your feed is mostly plugged up with people you don't even follow so they're trying to push that angle so tiktok's smart idea was to approach it in like hey let's give the impression that your organic posts are going somewhat viral so that people will now divert all the resources and attention they put into 
Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter into TikTok, and that would help it blow, and then that would help him become more desirable and maybe become more whatever it may be, and then that's what obviously led celebrities to jump on it too, because it kind of was an avenue for them to see, oh, this is a place where people are actually watching things, it's getting loads of engagement, which is leading to advertising bucks, money in my pocket, blah blah blah. So I never really understood why this is something that was obviously um not believed, because I've been in places where we had um you know an ex company I used to work at uh where we had a platform where we had a section of the, of the app that was a sort of discovery place where you could basically see people's things that they basically listed and the idea behind it was like you could pop it and a lot of that stuff was getting abused especially in the early parts of me being there because some people would have favorites you know who they'd kind of be in contact with the influence and stuff who would ask them hey i've got this stuff new listed could you kind of pop it for me and i'm assuming some people would also be in the behind the scenes were also getting payola so they were getting paid money to put stuff on the discovery page and again this is a smaller app this is not like an instagram or a twitter so i can only imagine the abuses people were running on those sort of big platforms like an instagram like a twitter they were probably doing some crazy shit but i know in the places i worked at before you know people were legitimately like popping stuff they were weren't meant to pop in highlighting things on the main page because they're friendly with an influence or they know somebody here and there or they're getting kicked back allegedly from other places so this has always been a thing but i think companies have now discovered that it could be something that they could empower they could kind of use their advantage to kind of get more money out of um, investors and to kind of make them appear to be way more successful or way more popular than what they actually are so again not so surprised by it but it's nice to hear him kind of admit it and kind of put it out there on front street regarding the whole thing and also it kind of shows you in general how much smoke and mirrors are out there in it and how you know like i think i see a lot of people here so i see a lot of people um have a lot of negative things to say about uh brendan schraub's alleged um buying of followers and stuff right and i don't really think he should be blamed for it in in general when it comes to Brendan kind of allegedly buying followers. I think BGR has basically said he essentially made sure that he paid for a certain amount of views for his special. What was it? Um, the Gringo Pappy because he wanted to get to a million in a week. And I think I remember saying on a stream once that I thought, oh, if he gets a million in a week, even if it's from like you know cats homeless cats and trolls and haters and stuff that's still a pretty good number for somebody that isn't that good at stand-up to get a million views in a week it's absolutely insane so i guess when i said it i didn't know that that was a metric that a lot of these comedians are using now as a thing to see if they're popular because i remember andrew schultz mentioned the same thing too i think Bert Kreischer mentioned something about it but he's he hasn't got his on youtube but i know mark norman mentioned it also so it's, a, it's obviously a thing that a lot of these comedy guys are doing but going back to the brendan short thing i don't think you should be blamed for buying views or follows because i think it's a it's a sort of like um mechanism that should be blamed more so whereas i think a lot of these kind of platforms podcast networks advertising companies and whatnot they are looking at those views as a metric to judge who gets ad who gets ads or not and the fact that you know they get a particular amount of views on their on their podcast to find a kid or he gets a particular amount of views on his comedy content that's what is allowing him to get those ads so i feel like if those advertising companies are a bit more stringent and a bit more kind of um hardcore and the numbers and whatnot and the metrics and make sure hey are you actually getting these views are they bought or not bought it will take the imp the impetus or the to kind of go and you know buy views away but because they're being rewarded for it that's why people do it they even do it in the dj world people would fake plays on soundcloud fake views on youtube and stuff all the time because they want to make it seem as if um they are a certain thing or they're a certain level because they know that um that kind of perception can really help you on your bottom line let's not lie about it like the truth is unfortunately those things actually do help like i'm sure you know some someone's youtube special out there is definitely going to get them a netflix still for instance i'm not sure if it's happened already i think maybe andrew sauce is a good example maybe he's one but i'm sure it's going to happen in the future where somebody's going to do a youtube special and it's going to be really well well received and the netflix are going to see that and they're going to want to buy or kind of like you know sign them on to do future ones you know later on down the line so as much as it's kind of annoying to see someone like a brendan go out and buy views and stuff and buy followers he's only doing it because it's actually being rewarded and he can definitely say hey i spent x amount of dollars on a hundred thousand views on my video and this is what i got from it monetarily because again buying views isn't cheap it's quite expensive i remember checking on it um online and stuff it's not a cheap thing to do especially when they do it properly you go to these farms that they can do it over a really long period to make it look organic they add co again the comments and the views and stuff it mess up to your account i think someone mentioned in my stream the other day it kind of messes it up because it's not really real people viewing what you're viewing so it gets recommended to people that don't exist and stuff which then negatively affect your account blah 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 but 
the the honest truth of it is that it gets rewarded whether you're a musician you get to be more high profile you get a tick on your thing you might get more gigs you might get invited to go on certain shows blah 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 blah, blah endorsement deals and if you're a comedian you definitely see some real life you know, ones and zeros in your accounts because you know you get to go in certain places it increases your profile um you maybe can just you know scam the ads and stuff not really sure but it definitely is being rewarded that way so i don't really blame these guys too much in my regard and again i don't, I don't blame too much but again maybe i'm just being a little bit um you know nice about it and it should be a bigger problem but that was what i saw then i thought that was interesting